Hey everyone, and welcome to the Hemp Horticulture Series. Today, we'll be showing you how to clone your hemp plants. So this guide will be covering cloning with soil and seed starter mediums. We'll need to start first with a plant cutting. A plant cutting is a piece of a plant that's used in vegetative propagation, or in other words, a fancy term for creating more plants without having to make seeds. In our case, we'll be taking a piece from the side branch of a hemp plant, placing it in a grow medium, and then create a favorable environment to allow the plant cutting to grow roots and become a new plant independent of the parent. A process known as striking, or more commonly, cloning. Remember that the plant cutting will have all of the same characteristics as the plant it was cut from. So if you take a cutting from a female plant, the cutting will grow to be a female plant. If you take a cutting from a tall plant, the cutting will grow to be a tall plant, and so on and so forth. Now for this example, I'm going to be using a cutting from something a little more extreme. And by doing so, hopefully this will answer a couple of questions that people ask about clones. The plant I'm taking a cutting from here is a female plant. However, this plant has been regenerated twice already. and is currently in its third vegetative stage. So for those wondering if you can take a cutting from a regenerated plant, or how many times you can regenerate and clone a plant, this shows that you can do it indefinitely. Also note that I'm taking the cutting from the vegetative stage. While it is possible to start a clone from a cutting in the flowering stage, this is much harder to do as it'll take a lot more time for the roots to grow when compared to a cutting taken from the vegetative stage, although the resulting clone will show the same traits as a regenerated plant, so namely a more explosive new growth, which is known as monster cropping. Either way, I don't recommend using a cutting from a flowering plant if you're new to cloning. Now onto how to cut the plant. You'll want to start first with a side branch, about 6 inches down from the top of the branch, give or take an inch or two. You'll want to cut it at a 45 degree angle so that there's a larger surface area of exposed stem because the exposed stem will help with the growth of new roots. In fact, you can also scrape off the side walls of the stem at the bottom of the cutting just to expose more of the stem to promote new root growth. Just be sure to do this lightly to not damage the stem. Another option to make sure you don't damage the stem is to use a razor for the entire process as opposed to pruning snips, although pruning snips are fine as long as they're sharp. Now you'll want to place the cutting into water right away to prevent air bubbles from forming at the stem. And then for all of the larger leaves, you'll want to cut all of them in half. This cuts down the transpiration and helps the plant not dry out while trying to root. It also makes the clones a little more compact so you can fit more in a humidity dome if you're trying to do multiple clones at once. Cuttings should be treated similar to seeds in terms of which starter medium to use. Jiffy pea pellets, rapid rooters, rock wool cubes, or just soil in solo cups all work well. My favorite one to use are rapid rooters for the same reason I like them for seeds. They're sturdy, easy to handle, and not as messy as pea pellets or soil. Now to increase the success rate of the clone, you'll want to use a rooting hormone on the end of the stem. These come in gels and powders, and no matter which you use, you'll just want to dip the part of the stem that's going into the grow medium in the root hormone. Now quickly place it in the grow medium of choice, and then place that in a humidity dome. In my experience, this is the most crucial part of having a successful clone. Because the cuttings can't get water from the roots anymore, you need to prevent the plant from transpiring as much as possible. And by keeping the entire cutting in an extremely high humidity environment, the plant will barely transpire, giving the cuttings enough time to stay alive and grow new roots. 
So you want to keep the humidity of the dome as high as possible, which will require misting the plant once or twice a day. Just be sure to keep an eye out for mold. Finally, keep a light on the dome for 18 hours a day, or if you don't have a timer, 24 hours a day is fine as well. The light used here should not be that intense. If you are keeping it under your normal grow lights, be sure to move it further away from the plant. But ideally, you can also save electrical costs and just use a normal compact fluorescent light bulb close to the cuttings, which is good enough to keep the clones happy and alive. After about a week or two, the clones that are successful will start to show roots. And if using a starter medium, you'll be able to see the roots coming out of it. And a final note, even if the cuttings are from the same plant, all clones are not created equal, as a number of factors could affect each cutting, so some might root slower than others, while others might not root at all. And because of this, be sure to clone at least a few stems each time. As you can see here with the four clones, they all rooted at different speeds, and even the one that didn't show any root growth, when removed from the starter medium, shows that it still has rooted, just not as fast as the other clones. And that's it. 